everyone. Welcome to Open House 2019. Uh, thank you for joining us on our Facebook Live tour. My name is Alex and I'm a communications advisor here at Michener, so I'll be taking you around the building during these videos. Uh, we're going to kick things off here in uh, the Medical Laboratory Science Program on the 14th floor. So to start off the tour, I'm going to hand things over to our uh, faculty member and students here. Hi, I'm Lori Ashley and I'm a professor here in the Med Lab Program. We're currently in the histology area and I'm going to pass you on to our students who are going to tell you what we do in histology. Hi, welcome to the histology lab. <coughs> so in this lab, we will receive samples from the hospital. Um, these are some examples of the hospital. These are some of the examples of the, of the, uh, that we will get from the hospital. Here is the small bowel. Here is an example of a small bowel here. We have the spleen. Example, examples of the spleen here. The uterus and the cervix, and then over there you have some bone and muscle. So what happens is that we get these samples from the hospital and would we'll break it down to look at the cells microscopically. Um, to do that, we'll cut them, uh, cut the samples up into uh, small pieces, little thin pieces, and then we will embed them in wax. So to embed, we usually use these machines and some wax. Um, we'll put a tissue into a cassette and then we'll let it free so it ends up in a block similar to this. We've got a few more here that you can look at. So after we um, put them in a wax block, we actually cut them up with these machines here called microfilms and they cut them into very thin. Um, and before we stain them, they actually look like this, so we just kind of really see the tissues, but up close you can see there's a tiny, tiny piece of thin tissue on there. So after we cut our tissues, we take them to uh, the staining part of our lab, uh, which is in a, actually in a different room, but we have some pre-stained slides here, and you can actually see uh, some of the tissue details, um, just ma macroscopically. And so these tissues are actually examined by um, uh, members of the hospital to uh, diagnose the patient with um, what might be abnormal cells or um, possible pathology. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to move on to we're going to move on to the microbiology lab next. So follow me this way. We've got a lot of visitors here already. So, uh, some of the things we study are fungus. So, we do have a unit where we do look at different types of fungus. We look at them both under the microscope and we look at them on the plates. The students have pictures and information that they use. So, this is just a common penicillium uh, that you may have seen on some of your fruit, even, but we look at the clinical as well as the, the potential uh, organisms that can contaminate our samples. We also do, um, so we do have some machines in this room, again, we're not going to be able to see them too many people, but we do use some automated technology for identification and susceptibility testing. So the idea for most of microbiology is you're receiving swabs or other types of samples that may grow pathogens. So we look at pathogens, but there's also a lot of normal flora, and we have to differentiate between what is normal, what is abnormal that's potentially causing an infection, and we do identification. So we do have some automated where we use something like this little card that can do both identification and susceptibility testing. This is an example of a manual susceptibility test. So here you can see the organism has been spread on the plate. Different types of antibiotic discs have been put on there. If the organism grows right up to the disc, it means it's resistant. If it shows a zone of inhibition, that means that organism is susceptible to that antibiotic and that can be used to treat. So we give the doctor the information about the potential pathogen as well as what they can treat it with. We 
we use a lot of different media in microbiology in order to differentiate between the pathogens and depending on where they come from we choose different media so if it's a throat swab we might choose one thing if it's a stool sample or a blood culture we would choose something else so we have lots of pretty colors of media and these all will the students learn all about how to use the different media when it's appropriate to use different types of media then once we have an organism growing we will do a gram stain and this is just uh, we do have gram stains under the microscope but these are some pictures of how we differentiate between the purple ones are gram positive the pinky red ones are gram negative organisms and you can see there's a number of shapes and this is one of our steps we use in processing This is again some of the types of things we can use to identify our bacteria. So we can go from very basic tube media, which is all very uh, manual. So again, lots of pretty colors. The different media ch turn different colors depending on their reactions. Then we have sort of the next step up went to a, uh, a card. So these are all basically miniatures of some of the tube tests that we can have. And then again, automated one in the Vitex. So again, you can see lots of pretty colors, so similar to what we have in the tube and the API. So this is used for identification as well. And this is our Vitex over here. That is the machine that would read the little parts. So we have three of those in this room as well. And I'm going to introduce you to Brendan, who's going to just talk to us for a minute. All right, I'll come around. Okay. Hi, how are you? Hi. Yes. How is everyone doing? You had a question for him, I understand. Yes. Yeah. So our question for you was: uh, during your time at Missioner, has anything surprised you about your program, the school, or working in the health sciences, or all of you? <laughs> There's definitely been a lot of things that have surprised me. I think one of the biggest ones, though, is the diversity among the students here, not only amongst backgrounds, people from different places, but from the different programs we've gone into. I specialized in microbiology coming here, but I know a lot of people who specialized in chemistry or different fields, and the amount of cooperation between us has been immense and extremely helpful. Um, getting to learn more from each other, teaching each other um, after lectures and stuff like that was definitely a big surprise for me. Um, along with the class sizes, I went from programs of 600 students, 700 students, to having 70 co um, co students with me at any given point, and the amount of cooperation is just incredible. Is there anything else? Uh, about the program itself, um, working here is incredible and amazing. Um, the teachers are very helpful. You work very hands-on with them as well as your fellow students. Um, work can be hard at some points, but it is definitely worth it in the end. And the amount of success you feel after completing your labs, your tests, and just grouping together and all sharing in that is inc an incredible experience. And for anyone who wants to work, in the field of medical laboratory technology, this is the place to be. Thank you. Have a good day. Thanks. So we're going to move on to our core lab area. This hall. So this is kind of, um, we're calling it our core lab for today. This is a lab that uh, has multi-use. So we have our core lab in here today. We do actually have a couple of other labs on other floors that are being used for continuing education today, but they're the ones that have our big analyzers. So we have a number of big chemistry analyzers and hematology analyzers as well. But we're all in this room today. So we have a few small analyzers anyways, you can see. So this is transfusion. So what you would like to uh, tell the Facebook Live community what you do in transfusion? Um, yeah, so transfusion sciences is the study of blood products and exchange. Um, in that regard, any complications that may happen during that transfusion react um, transfusion exchange. Uh, so we have an ex demonstration here. So one of the more popular examples um, would be we have a patient that comes in. They just went. Uh, they just had an accident, and we need to give them a type and screen to see what blood product we can transfuse them with. So here we have. Um, 
these tubes set up, we're gonna see what the blood type of the patient is. So for example, I'm gonna take my A and I'm gonna rock it against my lab coat. Here you can see that this mixes quite well together. Whereas when I take the B, you can see that there's actually agglutination here. It didn't mix properly. There is like a little, a little bead in the bottom of the tube. So if I was to follow that through for all of my tubes, I could conclude that this, per this patient is actually BRH negative. So from there, I would go to the fridge and I would grab the BRH negative blood. I would give that to the doctor and then um, they would be able to transfuse the patient safely. Uh, this is a more quick method. Um, it only takes 20 seconds to do the centrifusion, which is good in emergency situations when we do need the result quickly. Um, another example of this is just over here where we have the MTS card. So this is similar to what we just did in the tube, but this is a more automated method. Um, it would be incubated and spun in the MTS uh, machine over here, and it, we would be able to read this card and get a result that way. Yeah. That's two of the examples of what we do in transfusion science. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. Okay, we'll move on down here. So this is uh, some of the things that we do in clinical chemistry, so we're going to make our way through down here. So we do all those tests kind of like together. So clinical chemistry, we have um, some simple machines, and as I said, we have some larger analyzers downstairs. This is just an example of a clinitest machine. It would read um, the clinitest samples for urine, so it detects proteins, blood sugar, or not blood sugar, urine sugar, things like that in on the strips. We do cover point of care testing. This is just a very simple thing that most people at home, if they uh, ha have diabetes, they would use just one of our little analyzers such as this. We have more complex ones out in the hospitals, but there's a lot of point of care testing now. This machine is uh, called the Rapid Point and does analyze its blood gases. So it will measure the pH of your blood, how much O2 and CO2 is in that. And then on the end, we have a little osmometer. And again, this can be used in um, emergency situations, just basically looking at the amount of solutes in your blood and your urine. Other things that are measured on the bigger analyzers, people would know, we do kidney function tests, liver function tests, immunoassays, so we have all of those machines downstairs. And in hematology, <laughs> so, oh, I'm sorry. Hematology is uh, the study of, they're really looking mostly at now the actual blood cells themselves. So they're looking at red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. They're, so they'll be looking at uh, these things under the microscope. And you can see we have a picture just back here of a normal blood smear. So they have them on the microscope, but we have some pictures here as well. So you can see in here, we have some white blood cells. These are the red blood cells, and these little small purple ones are your platelets. So this is basically a normal looking smear. Mm -hmm. And a patient who has leukemia, their blood would look like this. So they have a lot more red blood or white blood cells in here, and you start to get them, um, their, the bone marrow is making them so fast that they are very early as well. So this is an abnormal looking smear. So the students learn to identify what is normal, what is abnormal, and they start to be able to identify the different types of leukemia as well. This is something that many people are familiar with. So again, we have some normal red blood cells, but if you think about what they look like in the first picture, you can see we have some little sickle shaped ones. And so this is a blood smear of sickle cell. And while it doesn't happen as much here in Canada, it is also possible to have uh, a parasite in the blood. So this is just an example of a microfilaria that's in a normal blood cell. And then last area we're gonna look at is our specimen procurement. So part of what we do is, so much of our samples are blood samples, we also have to learn to take blood. So while our technologists don't always have to take a lot of blood, uh, we do have to teach our students because in some areas you may have to take blood. 
So we start off never filling a tube this size, of course. Mm -hmm. So we do have, we start off with finger pricks, so the students will do finger pricks on each other. We also, as a technologist, you may have to take blood from a baby, and especially when they're an infant, we would actually take it from a heel. So we don't actually have live babies come in to do this, but we have our simulated for this. Then once the students are familiar with that, we start learning to take blood on our simulated arms. So we do use all the real tubes, so you see we have different tubes, so the students have to learn what's in each of these tubes. Different tubes are used for different types of tests. This one would be used for hematology, for example. This one often for chemistry tests. So the students would have to learn what's in those, when to uh, use them appropriately. Then they're going to learn to take, me, take blood on the arms, and then they progress to taking blood from each other. So as a student, you're going to take blood, and you're also going to be donating your arm. And I think that's most of what we do. There's probably yes. other things too. Yeah. Well, thank you. That concludes our tour of medical laboratory science. Thanks for joining us. We'll take a short break and then head over to our next program.